Uh, Lou Rockwell, let's look at this election. So many people know that Mitt Romney was for gun bans and abortion and open borders and globalism and carbon taxes and banker bailouts. Uh, Paul Ryan, banker bailouts, no child left behind. I mean, the list literally goes on and on. But he, he was held up as a conservative savior by Rush Limbaugh uh, for his plan to cut welfare to the general you know, poor people, which is fine with me because it just makes them dependent and, and screws up the economy. But what about cutting military spending like Ron Paul has said? And, 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 and people are like, oh, no, you've got to just worship Paul Ryan. Well, I was told I, I need to worship Obama and he was going to fix things. And now we're hearing about Ryan mania. I mean, I mean, is there no end to this? Are mainline conservatives as stupid as Obama supporters? Sure, they're, they're, they're stupid. Uh, a lot of them are, are just wrong, too. They believe they worship the military. They worship the police. They worship the national security state. They love drones. They love all this stuff. So, you know, if you think of the Tea Party, there's a bunch of them who are Ron Paulians. But there's also a bunch of them who are, you know, Sarah Palinites, Rush Limbaughites, and so forth, who believe in the whole regime. And so they, they applaud the wars, they applaud the killing, uh, they love that stuff. And they think it'll never happen because they think they'll never be arrested, they'll never be tortured, they'll never be tasered. Uh, good luck to them. But, um, so, you know, it's, it's a, uh, uh, it, they, they are stupid or they're wrong, uh, they're ill-educated. They don't understand the nature of politics. They don't understand history. They don't understand economics. And so they're, yeah, and they also just buy into rhetoric. It's, how stupid are people? I think of this when, the, when there's a, always the rhetoric for a new war. Um, and, of course, we're, we're, they're running a war against Syria right now, allied with al-Qaeda, which, of course, was created by the U.S. government to go up against the Russians in Afghanistan. It's when the U.S. employed Osama bin Laden and all those guys. So they're bad, they're good, they're bad, they're good. You know, this is the uh, the old switcheroo to keep everybody off balance. Um, but Paul Ryan, anybody, all you have to do is look at his record. He voted for every rotten thing that's ever gone through the Congress if the Republicans were supporting were supporting it. And of course, the Republicans did support all the rotten stuff, whether it's the bank bailouts, as you said, no child left behind, Medicare Part D, uh, the uh, uh, permanency of the Patriot Act, the uh, NDAA, SOMA, CISPA, I mean, all, all these horrendous internet control laws and so forth. This guy is for the expansion of the DHS. He's for more war. He's for bigger and bigger military spending. And by the way, his so-called cuts in domestic spending consists in lowering the projected increases. So uh, uh, it, it's all a trick. He's a phony. Uh, your listeners, of course, understand this, that all these people are phonies. So we see the sheeple uh, cheering on Romney, who uh, looks to me like he belongs in a Nazi party uniform. <laughs> and that's, that's, so we Why? have you know, right fascism and left fascism with Obama, right fascism, and that's our choice. And uh, we have another fascist in Paul Ryan. So the fact that he uses tricky rhetoric, that he uses libertarian or Ayn Randian rhetoric to uh, disguise his devotion to the total central state and the global empire, well, it's just another political trick. So I'd urge people, if anybody's thinking this is a good guy, or, of course, they're portraying him as, as an, you know, Ron Paul. There is only one Ron Paul, and this is, of course, the phony Ron Paul. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, the devil dressed up as Ron Paul. This guy is a very bad guy. He's a total neocon. He's controlled by all the bad forces. And uh, his wife, by the way, also was a, a lobbyist for, the, for Big Pharma before she married him. So this is a connected family, and uh, they've done very well. This recently came out that that he, when he was briefed by Bernanke uh, right at the beginning of the, of the banking crisis, he sold his stocks that he knew was going to go, or they'd been briefed were going to go down, Wachovia and uh, Citibank in particular, and he bought a lot of stock in Goldman Sachs, which he'd been told was going to go up. So, of course, this is the way these guys get rich. He's, he's a very powerful guy. He's uh, a complete phony. He's a, he's just, he's, the, he's a very bad guy. Who else would Romney pick? Romney... Romney is a very bad guy. Well, Romney's yeah, talk about phony. For I mean, torture, uh, concentration camps, everything. These are very bad men. Well, no, Romney will do Biden and Obama. Sure, sure. I mean, I mean, Romney will do stuff like call on his neighbors that are smoking pot, call the police, but then come in and take over companies and strip them and destroy them, and then prance around all day. I've noticed really evil people will have this act that they're Mister Goody Two Shoes. I mean, look at the whole Sandusky thing. Look at that. Look at how these universities basically become little governments. 
And then now the head of Penn State has been sent off to work at Homeland Security. So now if you cover up for pedophile rings, you, go, uh, you don't go to jail, you go to Homeland Security. Well, of course, it was a cover-up. That's why Louis Free was sent in to cover, cover it up. Um, the governor of Pennsylvania, the Republican governor of Pennsylvania, when he was attorney, he was attorney general when a lot of this stuff was first being talked about, why didn't he do anything? And then he was personally pressing right when this whole scandal blew up for $3 million to be given to the Sandusky Foundation by the state of Pennsylvania. Why, why was he doing that? How come that, so there's a million questions that are not being asked. Louis Free, who's a famous cover-up artist and a creep for the government, sent in to cover it. This is the way they operate, of course. They cover for the power elite and step on the regular people. No, so exactly. It's even coming out in major papers now that it's what we thought it was, a pedophile ring pimping kids out to these degenerates. All right, final segment with Lou Rockwell. Lou, you know, we've talked about the Republicans, but what about Obama? I mean, where is the so-called left that are bad on a lot of things, but at least for anti-war torture? Now they're kind of like, hey, torture people, drones, murder, death, Al-Qaeda, kill everybody. Uh, Al-Qaeda's good. We love war. It's our president. He's tough. And I see Democratic leaders bragging, saying, see, we're warmongers. We're tough. How do, what is it about decadent, affected people that they think murder and death is cool and powerful? Well, first of all, of course, political parties are about lying. That's, the government is about lying, and the political parties that are part of the government are about lying. So Republicans pretend to be for lower spending, for example, but of course when they're in power, the, the spending goes way up. Democrats pretend to be pro-peace, and uh, although I must say I, I, was, I was shocked enough, a few of them actually turned out to be pro-peace, and you're exactly right, they're all uh, fanatically, uh, if, the, if their guy's in the White House, they're fanatically for the worst war crimes. They endorse them, they cheer them on, and uh, again, people who are in government, and the political parties, by the way, are part of the government, they're not separate from the government. That's why, for example, it's impossible to take over a political party from the outside, talk, you know, take over the Department of Justice while you're at it, you, can, you, you can't do it. Uh, you can just refuse to be part of it. Uh, but you can't actually take them over. And like cancer, they're programmed to totally take over. So how long until they fully implode everything and start trying to use their 1.4 billion bullets on us? Well, I think that, again, the, uh, I started to say this before, but the government is so big that it's out of control, even internally. The, bureauc the problems of bureaucracy, Louis von Mises wrote about this in his great little book uh, uh, on bureaucracy many years ago. But the problems with bureaucracy, and there's never been a bureaucracy like the U.S. government, so they're becoming more and more trouble, uh, but more and more troubled, too. I, I always think of them like a, like a blind, vicious dog. So if you happen to get in their jaws or you're stepped on or whatever, you're dead. But uh, you don't have to be. Ooh, that's and a good way to describe to it. Them. It is like a giant, blind Cujo, uh, <laughs> and... and it is stumbling around foaming, but it could just implode at any time. I've noticed yeah, that historically. That's right. Yeah. No, that, that's right. Governments have come down in the past. Uh, our, as our government becomes bankrupt, the government is bankrupt. And it's trying to bankrupt us, too, of course, at the same time. And as its own troops, and this happens when empires start to come down, its own troops don't obey it. So um, I, I'd like to think that if American troops are ordered to shoot American citizens, they would actually refuse to do it. I'm having to keep my fingers crossed if that's the case, but I think uh, I think the government can't be sure of them. They can't be sure of us. They can't be sure of anything. That's why they're all scared. They're actually scared of us. And that's and good. That's good. Pre preening themselves in their uniforms, and they're so strong and so wonderful. And they're actually a little Casper milk toast, albeit with vampire teeth. Uh, <laughs> <inside> <laughs> <them>. <laughs> that's funny image, Casper milk toast, albeit with vampire teeth. No, no, I agree with you, but, but they're dangerous because they're cornered rats, but we actually have the initiative. They know that, and their own bureaucracy is starting to fall apart, and a lot of military and police are waking up. It may end up being, if they call for martial law, it might be their Waterloo like Romania with Ceausescu. Well, it, it, it could be, and I think they are, they are very worried about us. They're worried about their own people, and they should be worried. So it's an entirely illegitimate operation that lives off lies and theft and killing and so forth 
and uh, uh, governments have come down. It is in danger of imploding. I should say in danger from their standpoint of imploding. It would be a great day for us, of course. Exactly. Lou Rockwell, thank you so much. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.